In today's episode, we're diving deep into the fascinating world of submarines, those incredible underwater vessels that have captured our imagination for generations. But it's not just fiction that has been captivated by these underwater behemoths. In reality, submarines have been at the forefront of naval technology and warfare since their inception. From the first experimental submersibles in the 18th century, to the deadly U-boats of World War II, and the nuclear-powered giants of the modern era, Submarines have revolutionized maritime strategy and tactics. Beyond their roles in warfare, submarines are also marvels of engineering and innovation. The ability to dive deep beneath the ocean's surface and stay submerged for extended periods requires cutting-edge technology and unique designs. No submarine better illustrates this than the Soviet Alpha-class submarine that roamed the oceans during the Cold War. These sleek, cutting-edge ships, which were first introduced in the early 1970s, were created to rival the dominance of their American and NATO counterparts. The Alpha-class submarines quickly rose to fame thanks to their titanium hulls, small lead bismuth-cooled nuclear reactors, and exceptional underwater speed. In addition to capturing the interest of both sides in the great ideological struggle, the specter of these elusive predators lurking beneath the ocean surface also helped to spark an underwater arms race that fundamentally altered the nature of naval warfare. The Alpha-class submarine, known as Project 705 Lira in the Soviet Union, was conceived in the late 1950s and 1960s as a response to the growing threat posed by advanced American submarines. The Soviet Navy sought to develop a new class of submarines that would be faster, more maneuverable, and capable of operating at greater depths than their existing fleet. Under the leadership of Soviet naval engineer and designer Mikhail N. Barskov, the design process took place at the Malachite Central Design Bureau in Leningrad, now St. Petersburg. Compared to other submarines, the Project 705 models had a distinctive design. In addition to its groundbreaking use of titanium for its hull, the submarine also had a potent lead bismuth cooled reactor as its power source. This reactor's size was significantly smaller than in conventional designs, which allowed it to travel at extremely high speeds. It did, however, also imply that the reactor had a limited lifespan and needed to be kept warm when not in use. Project 705 utilized a double hull, like the majority of Soviet nuclear submarines, with the inner hull withstanding pressure while the outer hull shields it and gives it the best hydrodynamic shape. High submerged speed and maneuverability were made possible by the gracefully curved outer hull and sail. Aside from the prototypes, all six Project 705 and 705K submarines had titanium alloy hulls, which given the price of titanium and the required tools and technologies to work with it, was revolutionary in submarine design at the time. The first submarine, which was quickly decommissioned after hull cracks appeared, demonstrated the engineering challenges. Later, metallurgy and welding technology improved and subsequent ships didn't have any hull issues. With all these design innovations, these submarines were among the quickest of their time and were capable of submerged speeds of up to 41 knots. The Alphas were capable of operating at depths of about 2,000 feet with the ability to go even deeper in emergency situations. During their service life, the primary base for Alpha-class submarines was the Northern Fleet, headquartered in Severomorsk, near Murmansk, in northwestern Russia. This location gave the submarines a strategic advantage during the Cold War by allowing them to operate in the Arctic Ocean and the North Atlantic. The Alpha-class submarines were occasionally deployed to other ports, but their primary home port was Severomorsk. As with the vast majority of other nuclear submarines, Alphas were never used in combat. However, the Soviet government still made good use of them by exaggerating the planned number of vessels, which were believed to enable naval superiority by shadowing and destroying major ship groups in the event of war. The United States responded by initiating the ADCAP program in the British Royal Navy by initiating the Spearfish Torpedo Program in order to develop weaponry with the range, speed, and intelligence to pursue Alpha-class submarines reliably. The Alpha has never been officially reported to have engaged in direct naval combat, either with the United States or one of its allies. 
However, due to the secrecy surrounding submarine operations, it is quite possible that the class witnessed activity that neither party involved has formally reported. All seven vessels were decommissioned before the end of 1996, starting with the first vessel in 1974. The final ship in her class, K-123, underwent a refit between 1983 and 1992, replacing the pressurized water reactor in her reactor compartment. On July 31, 1996, she was formally decommissioned after being used for training, which brought about the end of the Alpha era. However, many lessons learned from the Alpha class were incorporated into the next generation of Soviet attack submarines, named the Akula class, which are still in operation today. Even though they are no longer found in the oceans, they can still be seen on television and in a few films and media productions. One notable instance is the 1990 movie, The Hunt for Red October, which was adapted from the same named Tom Clancy book. The Alpha-class submarine Konovalov appears in the film. The Alpha-class submarine is depicted in the film as a capable adversary and true to life focused on the submarine's speed and deep diving abilities. Well, there you have it, folks. The Soviet Alpha-class submarines truly were engineering marvels of their time, setting new benchmarks in design, speed, and depth. These underwater titans played a pivotal role in the strategic chess game of the Cold War, showcasing the relentless pursuit of innovation and superiority by both the U.S. and the Soviet Union. As we've explored today, the Alpha-class submarine's advanced design and cutting-edge technology gave them the edge in combat situations, making them formidable adversaries to be reckoned with. Even though they face challenges due to their complexity, the legacy of these submarines lives on, influencing modern naval warfare and submarine development. Thank you so much for joining us on this deep dive into the world of Alpha-class submarines. We hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. If you haven't already, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel for more exciting content. Don't forget to leave a comment below and let us know what other underwater wonders you'd like us to explore. Until next time, keep your periscopes up and your curiosity flowing.